Let's go ahead and see how to implement this. Let's continue from the app that we've been building. Let's ask a weather question and see what it does. Can you tell me about the weather? As you see, it returns one of the responses that we had defined on our anything else node. To fix this, the first thing we're going to have to do is create a new weather intent and add some examples. We can do this with the tooling. Let's create a new weather intent and we'll add some examples. And we'll create it. Cool. Now let's head over to the dialog tab and we'll add a new node to use this condition. And we'll add that node right before the node with condition at national parks. So let's select the node right above it and add a node below it. And now we'll set its condition to be triggered by the weather intent. We don't necessarily need to provide a response, and that's because our backend server is going to provide the weather data as part of its output in the response object. But we'll add the weather response here so we can test. Next, we'll pop over to the advanced view. And here, we're going to want to add a new property, card type, and we'll set it to weather. And this is to notify the UI that it should render this output using a weather card. Okay, Watson's still training. Once it finishes, we'll give it a try. Okay, it looks like we're done training. Let's type, tell me about the weather to test our intent. And we see our test weather response. These are all the changes we'll need to make to our conversation. Let's move to the next step. As we saw in the demo earlier, we want to be able to tell users about the current weather conditions at a particular park. In order to do this, we need access to a service that can provide real weather data. There's a service in the IBM Bluemix catalog that provides this data. It's called Weather Company Data. Let's now have a look at how we can create an instance of this service. Creating the weather service is just as easy as creating the conversation service. We can use Bluemix, and we can use the Bluemix catalog. In the Bluemix catalog, we can look at Data and Analytics, scroll down, and select Weather Company Data. From here, we see a description of the service, its features, and finally, the pricing plans. And again, like with conversation, we can use the free plan. And once the service is created, we can look at the service credentials. You can expand view credentials to get your username, password, and the API URL. In this case, you only need the URL property as it embeds both your username and password in the URL string. So go ahead and copy this and we'll add it to .env. Okay, so let's open our code editor and open the .env file and add a new environment variable. We'll call it weather API root and we'll set that equal to the URL from your service credentials. Okay, once you set that URL, go ahead and close this file. And now we're going to create a new module that's going to interact with weather. And we can do that by going to our server folder, opening up the API folder, navigating to the services folder, and we'll create a new file called weather.js. In order to invoke the weather company data API, we're going to have to make an HTTP request. Let's install a module to help do that. This project already uses Rx, so let's use an Rx compatible HTTP request module. Rx HTTP request. Let's write some code to interact with the weather company data service. We'll start by importing Rx HTTP request. Next, we'll create a new class and export it. We'll call the class weather. We'll add a new method by geo that takes a lat and a lon. And let's construct the URI for the API endpoint that's used to get the current weather conditions for the specified lat and lon. Do that by getting our weather API root from our environment and then appending the following path segment. API weather v1 geocode will pass in the lat and the lon slash observations.json. To make the get request, we'll return rx http request dot get. We'll pass in the URI and we'll set the query string 
we'll set units to E and language to EN US. And then we're expecting JSON, so let's set this to true. And we want to return only the response body. Now I'm not doing any special error handling here. Uh, of course we should, but to keep this simple, we'll leave it out. And finally, we'll return an instance of this service. And for our last step, we want to integrate weather into our discourse handler. So let's do that. Open the discourse folder and the discourse handler. So one thing to note, each of our return statements returns immediately and weather is invoked asynchronously. Let's do a bit of refactoring so we can return these asynchronously. Since we're using Rx and our weather service is Rx compatible, we can simply wrap our return values in Rx observables. To do that, we first need to import Rx. And let's wrap these return values in observables and return the value just as is. And we'll do that here as well, and here. Now, because we're returning observables, we'll need to make a small change to our discourse service. So here, we're currently mapping over the result of our handle discourse method. But now, since we're returning observables, we'll need to flatten them by changing this map to a flat map. So, at this point, we finally are ready to integrate weather into the discourse handler. Going back to the discourse handler, we will add a new case to our switch statement. We switch on the top intent. Currently, we have a case for the tell me about intent. Let's now create a new case for the weather intent. Now we need to look up the park in the database so we can get the location from the park record. We already do this lookup in the case for the tell me about intent. Let's refactor the code a bit so we can reuse this logic. We'll take the park's database lookup call and move it above the switch statement. If we find that the park property exists in context, then we know that we have a valid park, so we'll do the database lookup and assign the result to park. If park doesn't exist in context, then we'll assign the variable park to null. With this change, the existing tell me about case will behave exactly the same. And we can now use the park object in the weather case. If we get the park object from the database, then we should use our weather service to fetch the current weather at the park's geolocation. So let's go ahead and import our weather service. We'll return the result of a call to our weather services by geo method, and we'll pass it the latitude and longitude of our park. And we can get that from the park object's location geo object. And finally, we'll map over the result from our weather service and include it in the Watson conversation response. Here, we'll add our custom weather property to the Watson responses output object. And we'll assign that to our weather results observation object. And finally, we return the result. That's it. Let's try it out. Let's go ahead and try something. What's the weather like in Zion National Park? Awesome, we get a result. And let's try the other example. Tell me about Denali, and we'll follow that up with, what's the weather there? And again, we get a result. Cool, it works. We've just integrated weather into our chatbot.